Sister Nella Sammons from Tornado Apostolic Church, coming to you with a morning devotion, Sharing the Honey, Part 1. I want to read from Judges, chapter 14, verses 5 through 9. Then went Samson down, and his father and his mother, to Timnath, and came to the vineyards of Timnath, and behold, a young lion roared against him. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and he rent him as he would have rent a kid. And he had nothing in his hand, but he told not his mother, his father or his mother what he had done. And he went down and he talked with the woman, and she pleased Samson well. And after a time he returned to take her, and he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion. And behold, there was a swarm of bees and honey in the carcass of the lion. And he took thereof in his hands, and he went on eating, and came to his father and mother, and he gave them, and they did eat. But he told not them that he had taken the honey out of the carcass of the lion. A lion suddenly roared at Samson. But God turned it into a marvelous testimony. Samson's sharing the honey with his parents shows that the trials God causes us to pass through become blessings for ourselves and others. Hallelujah. Summer reminds us storms can bring up suddenly, spring up suddenly. And they can be very violent. This story reminds us evil is always lurking and always looking to pounce. You are more likely to get pounced in Timnath. Samson was attracted to a Philistine woman who lived in Timnath. When you go to the devil's side of town, don't be surprised if you get attacked. Samson was in the vineyard and most likely picking and eating grapes. In Judges um, 15 and 4, 5, then went Samson down and his father and his mother to Timnath, which I just read, and came to the vineyards of Timnath. And behold, a young lion roared against him. The text says he was with mom and dad. But if you read a little further, they were, uh, they were with him. But somehow on the trip, he had gone off on his own and was attacked by a lion. A lion isn't something you want to face alone. And yet everyone will have a day or a few like this on your journey. Jesus went to the wilderness by himself and was tempted by the devil. David described his time alone, speaking of being attacked by enemies and abandoned by his dearest friends. In Psalms 31, 11 and 12, it says, I was a reproach among all my enemies, but especially among my neighbors. And a fear to mine acquaintance, they that did see me without fled from me. I am forgotten as a dead man out of mind. I am like a broken vessel. So you see, there are times friends will forsake you, family will abandon you, and to top it off, you will be attacked by vicious enemies, and you will have to go through it all alone. Most times you are forsaken, it is uh, not intentional on their part, but it's just that God has decided you must walk this mountain path alone. And yet you are not alone. Everyone has battles that God sees to it that you must fight alone. Jehoash was a king of Israel, of whom the Bible says in 1 Kings 12 and 2. And Je Jehoash did that which was right in the sight of the Lord all his days wherein Jehoiada the priest instructed him. But we read that after Jehoiada died, Je Jehoash started serving other gods. Jehoash had a faith 
had only worked when others were propping him up. God doesn't want us to live on the faith of others, but he sees to it that we have challenged to believe for ourselves. One of the ways he does this is to give us trials, which we must go through all alone, so that our faith can grow. And we don't believe because someone else says we ought to, that we have found out for ourselves God is trustworthy. When the lion sneaked and attacked Samson, something wonderful happened. When the lion came roaring, the spirit came upon him in power. God has a remedy for the roaring lion. The remedy isn't revealed unto the lion until the lion is roaring. The Spirit of God was already in Samson. It was only the trial that brought on the awareness of that presence. What I'm trying to say is this. Just because you don't feel God doesn't mean he isn't with you. Think of it this way. If you have an emergency generator in your home, when does it kick on? When you need it? When there's a blackout? Do you have to go down to your basement every day to check and see if your generator is still there? But that is what some people are doing spiritually. If they don't feel God, they think he's not there. Listen, God does not leave you every five minutes. He is there for better or for worse. He is in it for the long haul. There is a truth in the word sweet air of prayer that we can have sometimes of intimate communion with God. But there are also normal times where you may not be aware of his presence. But that doesn't mean he has left when the lion roars. He won't let you down. He will be there for you. The lion that wanted you for lunch became lunch for you and others. Bees formed a nest there. Samson ate some of the honey, and he gave it also to his mom and dad. Honey grows in the carcass of yesterday's trials. Honey grows in the hallowed memory of what God has done for you. Honey is for sharing. He dipped his hands in honey, and his mother and father did eat also. When we make it our priority to seek first the kingdom of heaven, God will see to it that we dip our hands in honey for personal refreshment and to share with the world. Jesus is one of the most post-resurrection appearances, says to Peter and some others who had, their, had left ministry and gone back to fishing. People, have you any meat? He said. Have you caught any fish? They replied in the negative. It is God's intention that when the world comes knocking at your door, that we can reply in the affirmative, yes, I have meat. I know what it's like to be down on your luck, if there is a such a thing. But at the point of need, Jesus helped me. Every child of God will have times when the lion roars, but it's only so that God may show himself strong on our part and that we may dip our hands in the honey of answered prayer and share that testimony with the world. There are a couple of scripture references to honey from the rock. One is found in... Um, Psalms 81, but I would feed you with the finest wheat. I would satisfy you with the wild honey from the rock. Another is found in Deuteronomy 32, 13. I'll be reading from there. He made him ride on the high places of the earth, that he might eat the increase of the fields. And he made him to suck honey out of the rock and oil out of the flinty rock. Wild honey was honey stored by bees in rocks or trees. If there is not a place for bees to create a hive, they will create a nest in rocks, as seen in the story of Samson in the carcass of a lion. In Judges 14, Samson and his parents were on their way 
to arrange a marriage for him. As they traveled to the woman's town, a lion came to attack them. 